Welcome to Wholesale Bullet Jewelry. Today we're doing a clinic on bullet jewelry slices. And if you watch our other videos that we've done, you'll, we have gone into great detail of the 9 millimeters, the 40 calipers, the 38 specials, and the 45s. And we go into all the detail of what bezel settings, what crystals you need, dimensions on them, everything you've ever wanted to know about bullet jewelry in those. But I want to do another follow-up video too on the actual cutting process because a lot of you choose to cut your own bullet slices yourself because you go to the, the range, you, you collect your ammunition, you want to cut them yourselves, or there's sentimental value to it. I know I've had requests in the past for uh, military salutes to get the casings from them to actually cut and make jewelry out of them. We've cut a lot of special requests like that. We really try not to do that because if one piece of yours jams in our machine, which happens once in a while, and ruins it, then we feel awful about it. So on top of that, and between that and having to keep them separate from our production runs, we really don't do that very often. But this is the video that you want to watch for actually how to cut things. Unfortunately, I'm not going to take you in our shop. Our machine is all proprietary. We had an aerospace engineer help us come up with modifying some very heavy existing equipment that we were able to get and it's all modified specifically for the, the practical purpose of the cutting the bullets. Um, we do some other jobs with it too in industry but the majority of what we do is bullet related. I wanted to kind of go over the, a lot of the specifics here and if you want to zoom in here Sonia. The first thing I wanted to point out here is the difference between these two piles right here. This tray here is all 45 caliper slices. And the, on this side here, these have not been cleaned and these have been cleaned. We worked with a metallurgical chemist to come up with just the right cleaning formula and the right process for cleaning our bullet slices. And this is important for two reasons. Number one, it makes it faster for us. And number two, it makes it cheaper for you because we pass all of our savings right along to our customers. So if you look at these, these are, when they come out and of, of the full process, this is the coloration they look at. And then after they're fully clean, there's the difference there. Here's a few of the, the caliper slices um, before they're cut. Now, if you're, if you're starting to work by yourself, the, first, the biggest thing I recommend is working with the 38 specials. And the reason for that is simple. Look at the size of them compared to the 9 millimeter. They're at least 50% longer than the 9 millimeter, and that gives you more to grab onto. Because what you're most likely going to do is you're going to use a chop saw to cut these. And there are people who do a very good job at using a chop saw to cut these, but there's a lot of drawbacks to that. Um, and so what I did before this video is I pulled out a chop saw and I cut some. And then I also cut one on a lathe for you so I can actually show you the different styles of cutting that other people do, and then I can kind of compare it to what we do, and you can kind of get a feel for the full, the full process. So this one right here is a 38 Special, and it's been cut on the chop saw, and you'll notice a couple things, and when you look at this, number one, it's still hanging on, which is common. Um, as it comes across the end, it's going, like, cutting it with the saw, it kind of pushes it out of the way, and it hangs on the end, and you can easily pop that off, but I didn't on this one just so I can show you. Um, but you're also going to notice how it's kind of crimped right where my fingers are. That's from the pliers that I used to hold it when it was going into the chop saw. Now, the reason I say went to work with a 38 Special when you start, or a 357 Magnum II is another good caliper to start with, is there's a lot for you to grab onto when you or clamp onto when you're using a chop saw. The second thing you're going to notice is you see it looks like it's burned. Can you kind of see the blackness there and kind of the, the bluish coloration from being burned? That is really hard to get off. Um, our process and our machine doesn't burn anything, and as a result, it makes it much cleaner. If you set it kind of side by side here, you can really see that coloration from the burning process there. So that's the biggest reason we don't recommend using a chop saw. But if you're gonna do it, okay, well, what do you do? And if you look around out there, you're gonna see this one right here is done on a chop saw, and it, you see how it's all nasty there. It's got lots of sharp, jagged edges and everything which is fine, I mean, that's the way they come out. The biggest problem, though, is the side profile. If you look at the side profile, you're gonna notice, and this one's actually a lot straighter. No, no, it's not. You can see the, the curviness to it. As the, the chop saw blade comes through the bullet, 
what happens is it, it kind of kicks to one side or the other. And there's no way for you to clamp this thing in place and, and keep the blade from it from not like curving to the side. So what ends up happening is when you make a piece of jewelry and you set it flat, you can see how it doesn't actually set flat. One side, like right here, is higher than this side. Do you notice that? So that is the biggest drawback to using a chop saw. And almost all of our competitors that sell bullet slices, this is how they, they do it. It's the only way they can do it even close to the speed that we do to be competitive with us is to use a chop saw because it is fast. You can clamp it in and you can cut it off really quick. So what they do is they, they say that they hand file them down afterwards to get rid of all the burring and everything that you see on the back here. Well, the, the reality is and the truth is, is that they're not hand filing at all. They're using a belt sander. And right here, this one has been, is basically, I took this one here and stuck it on a belt sander and that's what you get. Now, you can get this to lay a lot flatter, as you can see. It lays a lot flatter because it's been, quote, hand sanded, even though it's really a belt sander. But you can still notice that this side here, or yeah, right here is kind of the high point on this one. Um, but it doesn't sit flat. When you compare it to one of ours, you see how the uniformity to that? I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely perfectly uniform. And the reason for that is our cutting head. Our machine has a cutting head that rotates around the bullet. And that's very unique in the fact that it's very expensive to do that, number one. But our, cut, our cutting head goes in a circle around it. So what it does is it works its way down to the center of the bullet. And it's, it's a similar way to, I mean, a lathe basically does the th same thing, I suppose. This one right here was cut on a lathe. So if you're not going to hand file them down and you want to jump up a step, what you want to do is use a lathe. Now the biggest difference here, and as you look at them really, really closely, and, and from the video, I mean you have to really look at them closely, and I don't know if you can see it on the video, but in, in, in person, um, they, they do look a little bit different, but you really have to zoom in so your customers aren't going to notice it. Now, if you look at the side profile, if you kind of zoom back on it and kind of shoot down at an angle right here, <clears throat> now you're going to notice the problem with the lathe. And it's the fact that you get these little burrs in the middle here sticking up. Can you see that? And I did a pretty good job cutting this one. But you get these little burrs sticking up here, where ours don't have that burr. And let me slide a couple of ours over here so I can kind of show you the comparison difference there. Ours are perfectly flat, so when you run your finger over it, it's smooth. Where these right here, you run your finger over it, you can hear the scratching. So you can just hear the difference there. Ours are smooth on the bottom. The lathe cut ones have burrs on the middle there. Now, what you want to do if you lathe cut them is you want to take this and take it on a piece of sandpaper and do something like that, or maybe hand file these, or you know, do something to kind of lay that burr down um, because that it's sharp and it ends up in the bezel setting and it creates problems there. So that's kind of an idea of what our competitors are doing there. Now that you start looking at the, the speed factor of things, and as you see here, if you were to use a chop saw to cut this many bullets, it would take you months, absolute months. If you were to use a lathe, it would take you years. I'm, maybe I'm exaggerating there, of course, and I'm sure you can leave me comments about how fast that you can use a lathe to do these, but I figure a, a, a professional machinist on a lathe is probably going to do one every 30 seconds by the time you stop the lathe, put it in the chuck, center it all up, bring the lathe in and cut it off. <coughs> to do a good job, you're talking about 30 seconds, and I think that that's very optimistic. So maybe you're at 120 pieces per hour. Our machine cuts these things our slowest speed that we do is about 250 pieces per hour and our fastest are the nine mils and we're right about 600 pieces per hour on that. So these things are literally flying off the assembly line in ours and they're completely done. So it allows us to keep our cost at a point where it's very hard for anybody else to compete with us, which is almost unfortunate because it's, it doesn't create as much of the free market. But we do try to keep our prices as fair and as reasonable as process possible. You'll notice there is a fluctuation in our prices <coughs> sometimes. It has more to do with supply and demand and the bullets that we're able to get in than anything else. But we do our best to keep our prices low. So I think that's kind of the basic update 
Um, if you want to know a lot of the specifics, I kind of did a similar to how we cut tutorial four years ago that is pretty good. A lot of people have watched it and you can kind of, you can click on our subscribe button and go back and look at our old videos that we've done and you can see that one. It, it kind of gives you a little bit more in depth um, in one of the corners of the shop is where I did that one in. And it'll kind of give you some more ideas too. But I really wanted to show you an update on using the chop saw because I get questions about this all the time of how to use a chop saw. And use a grinding blade. Don't use the, the teeth blades because then it grabs onto it and throws it. Not a good idea. Wear some safety glasses. Make sure the primers are out on those, especially because as you start grinding through there, if it hits any gunpowder, it's gonna explode onto you. And I've been personally hurt several times pretty bad by exploding primers. It is, doesn't seem like a lot of gunpowder, but those things are basically miniature bullets and they hurt and they're hot and it's, they're loud and it's not fun. So please, please, please remove your primers. Be safe about things. Make sure it's deprimed beforehand. Um, I think that's about all I had to talk to you today. I um, just wanted to show you the difference there. Um, kind of, if you want to kind of do an overview of the table here again, I'll kind of give you an idea too. I, I've talked about this in other videos. Our 45s, we typically run about 250 to 300 pieces per hour. Our nine millimeters here, these are our fastest. They're right about 600 pieces per hour, depending on how fast we were able to put them in there is kind of our factor. Uh, sometimes we're a little bit closer to 550. Our 38s are a slower one. They're probably about 300. I'm guessing we don't, I don't write this all down. And then our 40s are, they're kind of a middle ground one. I want to say they're 450 pieces per hour, somewhere in that range. Um, so we're able to cut a lot of these very quickly. And if you look at stock, we have lots of 40s in stock. The 38 nickel Winchester, we've been known for that for years. We've got a big stockpile of those. The nines are always around, um, and some of them we do primers in now too. And we actually visually inspect each and every primer before it goes into the machine <clears throat> to make sure that it's absolutely spent so that nobody gets hurt. So I think that's about all I have to cover. Click on the subscribe button, come visit us in the shop. We're open Monday through Friday, nine to five. You're in Plainwell, Michigan. You're welcome to stop by and you can talk to the girls. You can see some bullet slices. You can look at some of the crystals. You can shop for jewelry. You can see our, our everything we have going on with the exception of the machine shop, of course. I do apologize for that. Uh, look at our other videos. Give Sonia a call. She answers the phone most of the time and she can help you with doing an order if you like. Our website is wholesalebulletjewelry.com and that's about all. Hit the subscribe button and thank you for watching.